So I'm very excited to introduce Walt England. Um, he's our Deputy AA for Programs in Space Tech, and he's going to be providing some additional information on those envisioned future plans and uh, the plan going forward to get even more feedback from the stakeholders. Thanks so much, everyone. So good morning. So just one um, couple of pieces of logistics. One is to remember to do your questions through Slido app. And the other is that we're going to be doing um, questions at the end. We've got, we've got five excellent speakers, and then we've got 20 minutes allocated to questions at the end. So I did ask the speakers for one interesting fact that no one would know um, that was shareable. <laughs> and um, Walt said that he likes very long duration cycle rides over 100 miles, um, which he likes to think about work. Jeez, that bit. Okay, hey, good morning, everyone. Um, it is really good to see everyone here in person. Um, I just I was thinking yesterday, it was about almost two years ago, or a little more than two years ago, that we first met here at APL. Uh, thanks for having us back. This is a beautiful, fantastic venue. I think last time we were over in the Case Center, but I, I really like this new building and uh, the fact that we all get to meet here. Just quick show of hands, how many of you were here for that inaugural event in February before the world shut down? <laughs> Looks like about half. That's great. So welcome to the, to the other half, the new half. Um, we're happy to have you here. And I, I can't see online. I don't know how many people are actually online. I heard there were about 450 people registered for online yesterday. So welcome to all of you and thank you for being here as well. Um, but I, I would say this, this community, the LSIC community is probably, well, probably, it has far exceeded our wildest expectations. We had no idea that we would get this kind of a, a, a community coming together and, and helping us figure out a, a path for a sustainable lunar presence and, and on to Mars and, and beyond. I think this is the perfect opportunity for us in space technology and NASA to roll out what we, what we affectionately call our envisioned futures. We're gonna do that today. Jim gave you a, a little hint, a preview yesterday, and I'll, I'll tell you a little more about the framework that we've developed, which actually started about the time we, we first met here two years ago. So we've been working in parallel, and, and I think a lot, you're gonna see a lot of your, your input, hopefully your fingerprints on some of the things our, our principal technologist and system capability leads in this panel session is gonna follow. So we are actively soliciting feedback. Uh, this actually, we're, this last week and in, in the coming months, we're, we've got a series of RFIs that are coming out to solicit feedback from the community. So it's a great opportunity. And I can think of no better place to, to roll this out publicly than where we are right now. So with that, let's get into it. And okay, there we go. So like I said, about the same time we started with the LSIC here two years ago, STMD started this kind of a new strategic framework. Um, we, we started something called the Strategic Technology Architecture Roundtable, or STAR process. And, and even though this, this, this slide that you see is in a rectangular format, it really is a roundtable. We're trying to, to ingest and solicit input from all of the communities, the human spaceflight community, the, the science, robotic world, industry, academia, all of you, obviously. So let's, we'll start up at the top there on the, uh, the top left. If you, if you squint and look very closely, that's actually a notional manifest for the human Mars Artemis plan. Um, there, there's been a lot of thought in, going, gone into that. Um, still probably has a lot more to, to fully flesh it out. You heard Bob Cabana. I hope you heard Bob Cabana talk yesterday. Um, that, that is what that manifest is starting to look like. We've kind of got the first Artemis one, two, three, four, five, they're starting to get potted, but the, you know, the out years, we're really looking towards a sustainable moon, sustainable lunar and, and a Mars presence. Uh, the Visions and Voyages is actually one of the science mission director's decadal surveys. We actually use those decadals, and, and that's the, really the primary influence on SMD's investment strategy. In fact, the planetary decadal just came out about three weeks ago, if you haven't had an opportunity to look at that. Um, I would encourage you to, because there's a pretty strong shout out to the lunar community and, and STMD. I think they're, uh, they're really looking towards this community to to coalesce around lunar science and lunar exploration. So 
So if you look down in the bottom left corner, we, we engage with industry. We have a lot of one-on-ones uh, -on -ones with industry uh, to try and seek their input, what they view as their, their architectural strategy. Um, Jim Ryder was out at Space uh, Symposium a couple weeks ago. I think he said he met with 40 companies. So they wore him out, um, gave him a lot of input. But that's good. I mean, that is exactly what we want. Uh, we also engage with our cent the centers, the NASA centers, and the chief technologists. The, the former Office of Chief Technology has now been rolled up to an Office of OTPS Technology Strategy and Policy. Um, so they house kind of the, the internal NASA chief technologist community. And then we take all that and we've got this strategic framework that Jim showed you yesterday. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that, the Go Land Live Explore framework. It's really easy to remember that, kind of rolls off the tongue. But we, we take that and use that as sort of our guidepost to, to frame our technology investment strategy. And that's the, the piece down on the bottom right. So our strategic plans and the investment strategy for the next several years. It, and what we're going to show you now and hope you'll, you'll engage with us is an opportunity to help in influence that strategic, in that strategic investment strategy. Okay, next slide, I'm in control. So this is the, the framework Jim mentioned yesterday, the overarching lead, which is a strategy, strategic framework and the overarching lead um, thrust, which is really ensuring global space technology leadership, and then the go, land, live, explore it thrust. So go is really about getting to, to places beyond low Earth orbit. Um, that, those are primary propulsion and propulsion related technologies. Land is all about landing on other bodies, uh, the moon, planetary surfaces, and actually coming back to Earth from those places. So a set of technologies that will able to do that with, with both future robotic and human missions. The live uh, strategic thrust is really about sustainable human presence and robotic presence, robotic capabilities and technologies that will enable the, the sustained lunar and beyond. I think that's this community right here and a lot of the things that you're involved with with, with the LSIC are really influencing that thrust and we actually have the panel here to talk about that. So looking forward to a good discussion there. And then explore the set of technologies are really transformative and will, will enable new missions uh, beyond the moon and even Mars. So if you look over on the far right column, uh, there's a set of, we call them primary capabilities. So there are 18 of those. So those are the things that kind of the bins that we bucket into those, those four strategic thrust. And then that column in the middle is really the outcomes. Those are the things that we want to, that's how we know we succeeded. So for example, when we, we develop a, a nuclear propulsion system that can do fast transit to Mars for, for human space missions, or we can land 20 metric tons of payload on the surface of Mars to enable that, that first human Mars mission. Uh, those are the strategic outcomes that we want to achieve. And the principal technologists and the, the system capability leads have been charged with putting together plans to get us to those outcomes. Okay, just a couple of, uh, here's some things we're doing right now. So these are some of the, co the, the current investments and the, the current projects we have going in each of those four strategic thrusts. So GO, for example, we're developing nuclear propulsion technologies um, and a, a deep space uh, cold start engine that's actually gonna fly on Astrobotics Peregrine Lander, one of the first CLIPS missions. Uh, in the land category, we've got a lot of investments in kind of the EDL entry, descent, and landing portfolio and precision landing portfolio. We flew a lot of technologies um, on Mars Perseverance, including terrain relative navigation, um, the Mars Science Laboratory, I'm sorry, the Medley, the Mars Entry, Descent, and Landing Instrumentation. Actually, that was the second one. The first one was on Mars Science Laboratory back in 2012. This one, we flew a heat, uh, an instrumented heat shield to understand and characterize the entry environment. We've got a number of precision landing technologies that will fly on the CLIPS missions. We're actually transitioning to the CLIPS companies so that that will enable and enhance their CLIPS lander capabilities. Down on the bottom left there, you can see the live portfolio, things like ISRU, that is where our ISRU portfolio lives. And I think there's a lot of interest in this community in, in uh, ISRU. Fission surface power and, and even solar power on the moon. I think power is gonna be an extreme commodity um, and one that we will all need and utilize. And then finally, over on the right there, you can see our Explore portfolio. Uh, we've got a, a number of investments and projects that actually you're probably gonna see here in the next year, uh, make it to the moon and 
and beyond. There's a, we've got a cadre, which is the surface cooperative robots, and then Capstone, which I think Jim mentioned yesterday is the 12U CubeSat that we're gonna launch here, hopefully the end of this month or very shortly. Um, out of New Zealand, uh, that's uh, Advanced Space and Rocket Lab, and that's gonna be a 12U CubeSat that's gonna go out to NRHO and, and navigate and communicate from that, uh, that new distant retrograde orbit. Okay, those are all the things we're doing now. What, what are we doing going forward? That, that's really what we're here to talk about. So we talked about, we, we mentioned this Envision Future Priorities. This is our, our, our activity to help inform and influence our, our new strategic investment plan. And we've relied heavily on our principal technologist and system capability leads, and to a certain extent, the community. Um, a lot of what we've developed now has sort of been the internal, you know, based on uh, the, the internal NASA technologists and, and uh, leaders with some influence from the outside. We've been engaging in these conversations and, and listening and trying to coalesce that. But what we are doing now actively is putting out RFIs and, and really soliciting input from this community to, to bring that in and, and help us flesh that out for our future investments. Um, so we have these, these envision future capabilities, right? These are the 18 capability sets with those four strategic thrusts. And the PTs and SCLs, for short, uh, they've developed a set of, of documents which we're actually rolling out, and you're gonna hear about those, the Envision Futures documents. And they have a general um, index which, which talks about the strategic outcomes, the things that we're in the state of the art, the current state of the art as we know it, the, the things that we are currently investing in, and then most importantly, that forward plan, that high level floor, forward plan. And that's where we're looking for your input. Um, we, we, we do have a, you know, a budget planning uh, cadence that we go through and the next one is actually coming up right ahead of us. So we're gonna use the, the material we have now to influence the, the 23 and 20, actually the 23 is, is pretty much potted, but the 24, not FY24 budget cycle. So there is an opportunity right now before us and before you all to help us feed that. I will say our, our appetite sometimes gets a little bit bigger maybe than our budget allows, but we're gonna work that with the budget piece and uh, hopefully we'll get a, a nice healthy budget to, to work the future enabling sustainable lunar presence and, and beyond technology sets. So we, we hope that with your advocacy, you can, we can help influence the, the community out there. We, we tend to be a little cloistered sometimes and we all get excited in, in our own groups about the things we ought to be doing and investing in, but we really need you to help spread that message far and wide so we can, we can get the budget to commensurate with our appetite and what we know we need to do for a sustained lunar presence and, and ability to, to go beyond. Okay, um, how are we doing this? We, we just, actually last week, um, seems like last month, I guess it was last month, seems like eons ago, we put out the first RFI, Request for Information, aligned with our go thrust, right? The propuls largely propulsion technologies. Uh, that Envision Future package was, was made available and we put out an RFI open to the community. Any of you wanna weigh in on that? Uh, we had an industry day last week and we're seeking inputs to that, what we believe is the, 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 the go thrust uh, investment portfolio, about six weeks from start to finish. And that was the first of four the next one, the live thrust, the one we're going to talk about today at, at, during this panel here that's coming up shortly, uh, that, that RFI is coming out imminently, probably the end of the month. Um, we hope by the end of the month or certainly within the first couple of weeks of June, but that's an opportunity again for you all to, to look at what we think are the right plans and provide your input. Hopefully you'll see some of your fingerprints on what we've already put in there, but we want to take the opportunity and, and update it and, and then land explorer, the final two, those will come out later this summer. We didn't want to do them all at once and overwhelm everybody. Uh, we think this is a nice cadence over the next couple of months to, to get that input. And what are we going to do? We're going to take that and in the fall, we're actually going to use the AIAA Ascend Conference and, and bring the whole community together with probably some, some advertisement and help from the AIAA. We'll have a number of four open forums there and workshops again to to discuss with you and, and share back, share with you what we've heard and how we're, we've updated these strategic thrusts and envision future documents. 
So we are looking forward to that. Um, I, I'm not gonna read through all the details here. There's a lot of information on the charts. I think they will be made available. So I'd see a lot of people taking pictures, but we will make the charts available so you can read and see what our, our cadence and schedule for doing this is. And again, we look forward to your input. We're relying on your input. And um, I think with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Ben. You ready, Ben, to introduce our principal technologist and system capability lead associated with the live thrust, and then we'll have a, a good, healthy discussion on the back end and see what you all think about what we're doing. Okay, okay thanks very much.